The following video, the Center for E-Learning Didactics and Educational Research at the University of Veterinary Medicine, Hanover, will present to you one of the correct methods for blood sampling in turtles. Needed for this exercise and found in the Clinical Skills Lab are an intestinal clamp, a lithium heparin blood tube, a 24 gauge cannula, a 1 milliliter syringe, disinfectant, disposable gloves, sufficient cellulose swabs, a kidney bowl, a simulator, cellulose, and a waste container. Note, a rather large volume cannula should be chosen, as the relatively large nucleated erythrocytes in the blood, along with the low blood pressure and rapid coagulation in reptiles, collectively tends to lead to blood clogging up the cannula within a very short time. In addition, reptiles' veins are always punctured blindly without raising them. Therefore, lymph can also also be aspirated with the blood. The dorsal tail sinus, i.e. the dorsal tail vein, or vena coccygialis dorsalis, is the site of choice in turtles, which runs directly dorsal to the caudal spine. Alternative sites in turtles are the subcarapaxial plexus and under sedation also the jugular vein. The live turtle must be restrained by an assistant. Here it is held with both hands, with the thumbs on the carapace and the remaining fingers on the plastron so that the animal's head points towards the assistant and dorsally. The turtle's front limbs should not touch the ground. You should also make sure to hold the turtle's head so that it cannot bite. Here on the model, there is no need for fixation by an assistant. First, all required materials are placed within reach. Cellulose is laid out as a base. The sample container is labeled, the syringe and cannula are unpacked, and the cannula is placed on the syringe. The turtle's tail is then held with the thumb and the index finger of the non-dominant hand. For fixation, the tail is gently pressed against the plastron. However, if it is difficult to grasp it securely, for example due to a longer supracaudal shell, an intestinal clamp can be used for fixation. This should be cushioned slightly with gauze pads or compresses. The puncture site is sufficiently disinfected. Grains of sand stuck between the scales may become loosened. The area is then dried with swabs. To do this, wipe the swab once in one direction over the puncture site. If necessary, the same procedure can be used with additional swabs. Now the prepared syringe and cannula are taken into the dominant hand. The bevel of the cannula points away from the animal when it is inserted. It is pierced dorsally into the tail between the scales at an angle of 45 degrees until a resistance is felt. This resistance is the spine. Now the cannula is pulled back slightly to aspirate blood from the vein sinus above. If no blood can be seen in the cone when the syringe is pulled back, you should change the position of the cannula without pulling it out completely. Rotation and gentle movement laterally and dorsally of the tail help here. If blood is still not visible in the cone, the syringe and cannula must be removed from the animal's body. The cannula is discarded and another attempt is made with a new cannula. If the vein has been successfully punctured, the desired amount of blood is taken. In most cases, at least 0.5 milliliters of blood volume is required, depending on the desired tests. A swab is then pressed onto the puncture site and at the same time the syringe with the cannula attached is pulled out. The cannula is disposed of in the collection container. In order to avoid clotting of the blood as much as possible, the blood must be transferred to the lithium heparin tube as quickly as possible. The blood is filled in with contact to the wall of the tube, the lid is closed and the tube is carefully swirled about 10 times. The syringe is thrown away in the waste container.